Welcome to the third lecture of week 4 and in this lecture we will discuss vessel under external pressure. So, design of such vessels we will discuss here and this topic will be covered in two lectures that is lecture 3 and lecture 4 where in lecture 3 we discuss about the basics of uh, uh, external pressure and design procedure for uh, such vessels and in second part that is in lecture 4 we will illustrate a few examples related to the topics. So, let us start the discussion on vessel under external pressure. Now, what is external pressure? If you consider the internal pressure definition, how we can define that when it is more than the outside pressure, okay. When inside pressure of the vessel is more than outside pressure, we call that as internal pressure condition. And in the similar line, when outside pressure is more than the inside pressure, we call that as external pressure condition. So, as far as external pressure is concerned, many of the chemical process equipments are required to be operated under such conditions when inside pressure is lower than the outside pressure. And this is due to inside, when inside I am having a vacuum, obviously outer pressure would be higher than inner pressure and uh, that condition will be called as external pressure. If outside pressure is higher. For example, if inner pressure is atmospheric pressure and outside pressure is more than atmospheric pressure, then again it is called external pressure condition and if the combination of both means internal vacuum and external more than atmospheric pressure. So, in all these conditions we consider external pressure and then vessel will be designed in different manner. Now, as far as examples of these are concerned, there are definite equipment which are used in such condition. For example, if I am having multiple effect evaporator that is usually operated below atmospheric pressure and in that system vacuum is created and due to this vacuum, it uh, uh, it takes the feed on its own because pressure difference is there. Okay? So, this is uh, so, multiple effect evaporator is an example. Another example I am having is vacuum distillation column and then crystallizer. So, all these examples comes or operated under the category of external pressure. Now, what happens when external pressure is applicable? For example, if I am having a cylindrical vessel, I have hoop stress as well as longitudinal stress if I am considering thin vessel. Okay. Now, when external pressure will be applicable, it will try the vessel to push inward. Okay. Uh, I hope I am clear. So, in that case, when internal vacuum is there, along the length also it will try to squeeze and along the uh, circumference also it will try to squeeze. So, in that case, it is observed that circumferential compressive stress will be twice then the longitudinal compressive stress because when it is tried to squeeze it compressive stress will applicable in that case. Okay. So, uh, that uh, compressive circumferential stress that we can call as compressive hoop stress will be twice then the longitudinal stress. And under external pressure the vessels are subjected to two kinds of failure. First is due to elastic instability or we called it buckling when stress is less than proportional limit. Okay. So, as far as uh, uh, failure of material is concerned that is at elastic limit or that comes as or that also occurs at plastic limit. So, when it is in elastic limit it uh, reforms its shape. Okay. And when it is in plastic condition or plastic region the failure will be permanent. Okay. Now, if you consider the stress and strain graph here when it will reach to elastic limit that we up to here it will follow the Hooke's law. Basically, Hooke's law will be uh, till the proportionality limit and after that we have the elastic failure as we have already discussed in uh, previous lectures. Now, why it is occurring? It is occurring due to geometrical irregularities like lobes in a shell cause buckling or lower 
pressure what is lobe when i am having any type of dent or any type of flat uh, section in uh, uh, cylindrical vessel or if any type of irregularity in geometry occur because of that elastic failure occurs next i am having plastic instability and the condition is when stress is more than proportional limit and less than yield point if this condition will be there we have plastic instability and out of roundness may cause failure at lower critical pressure okay so what is out of roundness out of roundness means when uh, geometry is not regular for example if i am having cylindrical shell it includes regular or uniform geometry okay and for example if i am considering ellipsoidal type of vessel or uh, uh, cylindrical vessel with uh, dent so all these uh, condition will come under out of roundness and uh, because of out of roundness failure will occur okay so proportional limit is defined as the greatest stress which a material can sustain without deviating from law of stress and strain proportionality so basically when the material follows hooke's law we can call that it will have the proportional it is below the proportional limit okay but as far as failure is concerned that is basically occurring due to the irregularity in the geometry now we will discuss type of failure occurs when internal pressure or external pressure failure is occurring in a system so the mechanism of external pressure failure is different from internal pressure failure what should be the mechanism when i am considering internal pressure it means internal pressure would be higher than the outside pressure okay so in that case when internal pressure failure will occur it means whatever stresses are generated in the metal part that exceeds the damaging stress of the material in that case uh, vessel bursts it means the pressure is uh, releasing from internal to outer so it will in form of bursting okay however when i am considering external pressure condition in that case what happens because internal pressure is lower than outside pressure outside pressure will cause failure because it will try to squeeze it so in that case we have change in shape but in internal pressure bursting will occur and in external pressure squeezing will occur as you can see from this diagram here we have internal pressure failure and this diagram we have also discussed previously and in external pressure condition situation like this occurs okay when the vessel squeezes and you can see from this uh, diagram also now if you consider this diagram this is what if you focus on the wheels of this it is basically the train trolley so you must have seen the train trolleys which carry liquid or compressed gas from one place to another place and in this case uh, you must have seen that it is very it appears very strong okay that train trolley and uh, once failure will occur it will squeeze it will be it will happen like uh, it's made of uh, a paper okay it will squeeze like this and this type of failure we basically called as buckling if you remember in second slide of this lecture we have a word buckling so buckling is nothing but this where i'm where i'm having a squeezing of the system a squeezing of the vessel so this buckling is occur in seconds okay when uh, we have external pressure failure will occur at uh, instant um, a duration of 1 second only it squeezes okay so it is basically a huge structure if you imagine the uh, train trolley and squeezes and it squeezes or uh, reduce its shape in seconds okay so such type of vessel should be designed very carefully because when failure will occur we do not have time to rescue or we do not have time to recover its shape okay so let's discuss few points about external pressure uh, vessel and the stresses generated in this 
So, because of external pressure effects, the cylindrical vessels experience an induced circumferential compressive stress which is equal to twice the longitudinal compressive stress that we have already discussed. So, in such cases failure will occur due to circumferential compressive stress because that is more. So, it will fail first. So, as a result vessel is apt to fail because of elastic instability caused by circumferential compressive stress. And the rigidity of the vessel under such condition may be increased by using uniformly spaced internal or external circumferential stiffening rings. Now, what is this stiffening rings? It is basically the structural support provided to the cylindrical vessel. Okay. So, because of this structural support failure will not occur. Why failure will not occur that we will discuss. Now, in this slide we will discuss the images or the photographs related to cylindrical vessel when stiffening rings or uh, circumferential stiffening rings are placed. If you consider this uh, image here I am having the huge length of the vessel and after certain interval we have these rings. So, these rings are nothing but the stiffening rings. In the similar line you can see this uh, vessel where these uh, structure is basically a stiffening ring okay. and uh, if you consider this is basically the stiffening ring separately and which is welded from this side to periphery of the vessel. Now, why the failure will not occur when I am using a stiffening ring? If I am not using a stiffening ring, the whole length will be available for vessel to act or to squeeze. Okay? If I am having a stiffening ring, it reduces the effective length of the vessel. Okay? Now, if you consider this image, if I am not using these stiffening ring, the whole length will be available for external pressure to act. If I am having these rings, it means the vessel is having only this much length. Okay? Vessel is having only this much length. It is not having the uh, total length. So, effective length of the vessel will reduce and because it is acting and on this much section only, it will these ring will provide sufficient rigidity and therefore, it avoids squeezing the vessel. So, in this way when we are using a stiffening rings failure of external pressure vessel will be avoided. So, what we have discussed that a stiffening ring provides sufficient strength to the structure or to the vessel and if that ring is placed within the critical limit, it will avoid failure and if it is placed above the critical limit the failure may occur. So, it is better or it is uh, mandatory to define the critical length between the stiffeners. So, that critical length which is denoted as LC is the distance after which elastic instability may occur and which is given by this expression here we have LC equal to 1.11 D naught root over D naught by T where T is the thickness of vessel and D O is the outer diameter of vessel. And if you remember the previous slide there we have out of roundness and we have already defined out of roundness that it is a irregularity in the geometry if I am having ellipsoidal vessel or if I am having cylindrical vessel with the dent etcetera we can say that it has out of roundness. So, that out of roundness can be quantified as for oval shape or cylindrical shape it is given as uh, u actually u denotes the out of roundness which is equal to 2 d max minus d minimum divided by d max plus d minimum into 100 and if I am having dent so u can be defined as 4 a by d naught into 100 where a is the depth of dent that is the maximum value is to be taken. Now, if I am having 3, 4 dent, A would be the maximum depth of the dent. So, for older vessel larger value from above expression 
is to be selected. For example, if I am having oval shape along with dent, so we calculate u from both equations and then larger value will be selected for design and that is for older vessel. For new vessels where out of roundness is not occurring due to dent, okay. in that case value of u should be taken as 1.5 percent. So, this out of roundness will be given in percent. Now, we will discuss the design procedure for external pressure vessel. It has basically two condition, first is elastic failure and second is plastic failure. So, let us discuss what is elastic failure. And in this elastic failure, safe external pressure P against elastic failure is found from this expression. Now, what is safe external pressure? Safe external pressure is that pressure which will not allow failure to the system. Okay? So, whatever pressure I have to consider in design that I will consider as safe pressure so that failure will not occur at that particular pressure. Okay? So, design pressure in this case you can consider as safe pressure. So, here P is basically design pressure which is equal to K E T by D naught power M and from here I need to find out T. So, P is the design pressure K and uh, M are constants and D O is outer diameter of shell and E is the modulus of elasticity and K and M as we have discussed these are constants which is the function of uh, d naught by L and it is given in this table and this is table 8.2 in book given by B C Bhattacharya. So, here I am having d naught by L different values and corresponding k and m values we can see from this table. And now we will discuss the plastic failure condition what are the design equation to find out the thickness of vessel under external pressure. Okay. So, here we have the safe external pressure that is P and this P as we have discussed already that whatever design pressure we are considering that will be this P and which is equal to 2 F T by D naught when D naught by L is greater than 5. However, when D naught by L is less than or equal to 5, we can calculate safe external pressure by this expression, okay, where u is basically out of roundness and from this expression we can calculate this T. So, what should be the procedure to design the vessel under external pressure is when we are given a design pressure, first we will calculate the thickness considering elastic failure. So, previous expression we will consider to calculate the thickness of vessel. Now, further that thickness whatever we have calculated through elastic failure that we will consider that we will use in plastic failure expression and we will calculate the pressure. If pressure is coming greater than whatever we have considered in elastic, it means whatever thickness we have computed that is correct. Okay. Otherwise, what happens? We will consider safe pressure directly in uh, plastic failure condition and then we will calculate thickness from that expression. And further, I do not need to check that thickness with elastic failure because when thickness can sustain plastic failure, it can also sustain elastic failure. So, in this way we will design the vessel under external pressure. Now, another condition I am having is what stiffener I should choose. Okay? As we have discussed that uh, circumferential stiffener will provide strength to the structure or strength to the vessel, what should be the stiffening ring? Okay? What should be the correct stiffening ring? Okay? So, circumferential stiffeners are used in external pressure vessels as we have discussed already to improve rigidity against collapsing. Okay? So, these stiffeners do not allow collapsing of the vessel because it reduces the effective length of the vessel. But for that case, stiffeners themselves should be rigid enough. Okay? Stiffeners should be, 
should not be weak so that when uh, failure will occur that stiffener also squeezes. Stiffener's role is to provide rigidity for that case stiffener should be rigid enough to withstand all external loads. And moment of inertia is a measure of such rigidity and moment of inertia is the measure of such rigidity. So, here we will compute the moment of inertia of the structure, structure means the vessel along with the stiffener and then that value we will compare with the moment of inertia of the stiffener. If stiffener moment of inertia is higher than that of the structure, it means a stiffener is strong enough. Okay. Now, as far as moment of inertia is concerned, here we will discuss second moment of inertia and we also call this as area moment of inertia. So, let us see the expression. So, moments of inertia of a stiffening ring and the shell act together to resist collapse of the vessel under external pressure. Okay. So, this is the expression to compute uh, moment of inertia of the structure and it is given by do square l bracket t plus a s by l f divided by 12 e and where i is the required moment of inertia of the structure t is the shell thickness d o is the outer diameter of shell l is length between stiffeners or distance between stiffeners a s is the cross sectional area of one circumferential stiffeners. So, whatever stiffener I will choose I have to find out the value of cross sectional area for that stiffener and f is the allowable stress of the material. And the condition is moment of inertia of the stiffener which we have to see from the standard it should be greater than required moment of the inertia of structure. So, if this condition satisfy we can say that whatever stiffener I have chosen that is strong enough to avoid collapsing. Further any external metal welded or rigidly held along the circumference can be considered as stiffeners provided it satisfy above equation. So, we can have a ring, we can have different uh, uh, type of structure also for example, if I am placing some bar or something like that. So, it will also called as a stiffener. So, we can consider different structures of a stiffener whichever is satisfying the previous equation, it works nicely with the vessel under external pressure. So, in determining the end side effective length, one third depth of formed head is to be added to the cylindrical length. What is the meaning of that? For example, if I am having this cylindrical vessel and one side is having form section or formed head. Okay. So, length whatever I have to consider that should be the effective length because stiffness should be rigid enough to withstand the shape of this uh, shell as well as this formed head. So, in that case uh, total height of that uh, form section let us say it is h i. So, we will consider one third into h i as the effective length of the head which should be added to the length of the shell. And these diagram if you focus here we have i beam as well as channel and this we have also discussed in uh, uh, column design for uh, support. And this I beam as well as this channel, these both also work as a stiffening ring. Okay. And here we have H is the height of uh, these stiffeners and B is the width of these stiffener as you can see from this diagram. Now, here you see YY and XX. What is this YY? If I am placing the stiffener or if I am welding the stiffener from this side to the vessel, the whole YY will be available outer to the vessel. I hope I am clear. So, in that case uh, moment of inertia I have to take along with y y and for example, if it is welded horizontally I have to take x x as a moment of inertia. In the similar line y y I can choose for this channel and x x I can choose for this channel according to its orientation. 
So, if you consider I beam it is uh, that you can visualize in this image more clearly this is basically I beam and this section is basically welded to the outer periphery of the vessel. Okay. So, if it is welded this section is welded it means it is uh, attached in y y section and moment of inertia we will calculate we will consider as I y y. Okay. And this is the table which is basically table C 2 for I beam and here we have different sectional area depth H and B whatever we have seen from the previous uh, uh, images and here we have moment of inertia I x x and I y y whatever would be the placement according to you can choose the value from this table. Okay. So, these are different designations uh, to be used as a stiffening ring. It will be more clear when we will solve a problem on this and in the similar line here we have uh, uh, data for uh, channel stiffener and it is basically given in table C 3 and table C 3 and C 2 are available in uh, book given by B C Bhattacharya and here I am having different parameters like sectional H B and here I have I x x and I y y which I need to extract for computation purpose. So, in that way we have to design the vessel under external pressure and we have to choose correct stiffener for the vessel and that is all for now. Thank you.